Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today's Tuesday lesson here is going to be on techniques and kicks. So I'm not going to do a video showing the uh, the warm up exercise and calisthenics. Those are pretty self explanatory. Plus, we have many videos in our uh, YouTube library that explain in detail all of those um, activities. But today we're going to focus on techniques and kicks. Uh, Wednesday's um, session is going to be on forms and some positioning practice drills for your forms. And then Thursday, we're gonna have conditioning video. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the video here. Uh, we're gonna start with black belt, and then I'm gonna move all the way down here. Um, actually, never, no. I'm gonna start with the low belt, and then we'll move up. So again, for the kicks here, three sets of 15 kicks on each leg. You can kick in the air, you can kick on your bags, or you can kick paddles if you guys got a paddle or you got a partner to hold the paddle with you. So for yellow belt, we're gonna work on the outer crescent kick here for yellow belt um, kickers, or for your solid yellow belt. Outer crescent kick starts with the back leg here, and I'm gonna swing it up and out in that rainbow motion here. So I swing it up, cross over in front of me. Huh. Other side. Make sure I cross a lot here. This is all hip motion and movement. I want to keep the knee straight. Boom. I can do one leg continuously for 15 kicks, or I can rotate my legs for 15 kicks, which would be a total of 30. Ideally, I would tell you, rotate your legs, one kicker kicks 30 times, 15 on each side, three sets of that. So when you get done, you would have done 90 total kicks. So yes, a lot of kicks here. It'll go quick though, it doesn't last long. I'll show you here right now, I'll just do five of them. Hana, dual, set, net, dasa. There's five right there, that probably took about seven seconds. So after 90 kicks, hmm, maybe two minutes of kicking, that should give you really good warm up for your legs for the next drills. So that is yellow belt there. Now, anybody can do any one of the drills if you want to add in your, your practice as well. You don't have to just do your kicks that are for your belt level. So just so that you guys know that. So yellow belt, orange stripe here is going to be working on the back kick today. Turn and pivot those feet. So whatever leg you have back, that's the leg you're going to kick with. Turn and pivot the feet. I look over my shoulder. Put this foot down so I stand up on one leg. Chamber my knee. Kick that leg straight back behind you. You notice I'm landing backwards. Then I finish up to turn back to my guarding stance. So here, hop, come back around, hop. Now, for those of you that have a bag, you can kick on your bags and do the back kick pretty easily. If you don't have a bag, you can just kick in the air, aim at something, kick in the air. If you have a paddle, you can have somebody hold the paddle for you. They can hold the paddle off to the side with the paddle side down, okay? Or if they're brave enough and you're good enough on your kick, they can hold the paddle here kind of on their hip or their side a little bit. So that way it gives you a chance to get an idea of what it's like to hit something a little more solid because it's different kicking on a, a bag or body uh, than hitting the paddle or kicking in the air. So if you hold the paddle here, it gives a person up a little bit more realistic um, feel of what that kick will do. So 15 each leg, three sets of that. That's yellow belt, orange stripe. Um, orange belt, green stripes here. We got our turning roundhouse kick. Again, most of you guys know these kicks. So what I want you to do is focus on two, one or two things here that I go over. And all of these kicks are, we already have videos in our YouTube library. So if you want more details on the kicks, just go ahead and check out any one of the other videos. It'll give you a little bit more details. I, I'm going to keep these pretty brief here, uh, pretty brief, so that way the video is not too long for you. Guarding stance, turn and pivot. Kicking leg is in front, but when I turn and uh, when I pivot and turn, it now becomes the rear leg then you're going to throw the kick from there. What you want to focus on for those that are doing this kick, turning and pivoting first, not just spinning around with your kick. Move the feet first, 
You want that pivot in first. And then when I take this step, I want to really try to step straight forward linear in my line here. I don't want to understep and I don't want to overstep. I want to stay right in line. So now I can execute my kick very straight forward. This kick is used to gain distance, but it's also used as a little bit of a sneak attack. Somebody might think I'm getting ready to throw a back kick. So when they see this move here, oh, I changed it. I made them think I was back kicking, and then I followed through with a roundhouse kick. So watch again, I'll turn the other way, keeping the hands in nice and tight. Hup. Hup. So that is yellow belt orange stripe with the turn and roundhouse kick. Blue belts, jump turning inner crescent kick. So inner crescent kick. This would be turning into crescent kick, which we, we kind of don't really have in our curriculum, um, but that's okay. Jump turning into crescent kick is like your are not right? Now, one thing that you want to try to not do is what I just showed you right there. This movement right here, hop, 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 boom. I just showed you that way because I'm turning slow. I'm going to take my glasses off for this one so they don't go flying and I break my only good pair. So, here, same thing. Anytime you're spinning for any spin kick, any turning kick, any kick where you're going to rotate around, you always want to make sure you pivot the heels first. Pivot those feet. Pivot the feet first. Always, always, always. So that's one thing I want you to focus on right now for anybody that's doing spin moves right now. Pivot those feet first here. And that is the biggest misstep that most people forget all the time because they want to get into the kick, they just want to do it fast and quick. And after their fourth or fifth kick, they really stop pivoting and now they're just turning their whole body no matter which jumping, spinning kick they're doing. Okay, so here, turn and pivot. Bring this leg around like I'm doing a small little outer crescent kick or similar to doing the Nadabon, then I'm gonna jump an inner crescent kick in. If you got a lot of torque, you see the way I finished that as I turned, I kept spinning on that, that's fine. Got a lot of torque going, which is what you want. It might be a little tricky for you to stop that momentum. So from the other side, hop. Again, three sets of 15. Okay, next kick, which is going to blue belt black stripe. Let me get my glasses on here. And I'm sorry, red belt, uh, blue belt red stripe. Whip kick. A couple of ways I want you to practice on your whip kick today. The thing that you have to remember is knee pitch up, up, boom. I'm going to give you a couple of ways you can do this one. You can do it where you just chamber the knee straight up here. Boom, and I'm slapping down, it's the axe kick. Uh, I think most of the red stripes on virtual should know this one already. But is an axe kick pulling down, knee pitch up, hook, down, hook. Now, a couple of ways you can use this, and it, it would depend on what's happening for the, uh, the attacker or the situation. If they're coming in very strong and aggressive, I would want to pick my knee straight up, just knee pitch, boom, and get that foot up high and as fast as I can so that they could run and potentially run into my foot. If they're coming in a little bit more cautious, which is what a smart fighter would do, be a little bit more cautious at first, you want to kind of feed them into that. So you would draw back first, then I knee pitch, boom, then I bring it down. So first one here, just knee pitch up, hup. second one here, draw back. Hup, hup. Now on the draw back, if I do it right here in front of the camera, I might slightly curve it around like an outer crescent kick, slightly. Because I, I, I kind of don't want them to see that I'm going to kick to the face. If they're coming in with like a combination maybe even a double kick a little bit, or they're trying to edge me and get really close to me. I use this kind of a movement 
almost so that it seems like a deep, uh, a retreat or I'm you know evading back but really I'm just doing it to get some a little bit of extra room and maybe throw off their mental thought process of trying to figure out what I'm doing so it slightly goes out to the side but I'm still gonna pull it straight down as an X game. blue belt red stripe blue belt black stripe your pot of chuggy double kick two ways to do this one today for you guys Actually, I want you to do it this way. We've been doing it for uh, the last few weeks with your immediate, where you would jump back and kick, boom, boom, at the same time. But what I want you to do this time is a full skip back, slide back, then just a double kick. You don't need to go back and you see how when I backed up, I didn't hit the bag, not because I was trying not to hit the bag, but I don't want to re-enter back into the meat, into the person. Remember, they're gauging to me. <laughs> so if you're watching me here from the side, I'm going to angle a little bit just so you can kind of see a better, better view. <laughs> now, here's the secret tip on this one. And this almost goes for all any powder check. Pivot, pivot, pivot the feet. So when I skip back. See how I pivot my feet here? So I can kind of take off a little bit more forward, almost like front kicks. Not necessarily front kick because I'm gonna turn it into a roundhouse kick, but from here, it's gonna allow me to, to back up and take off and explode in the kick a lot easier. I don't have to go around my body. I can just go right into the kick. If I stay totally sideways, now I gotta get around this knee. Not the worst thing in the world, but if I can shave off a little bit of micro movement, it makes my kick more efficient. So that is your blue belt, black stripe. Now we are into red belt, white stripe, which is your double spin kick. And here's double spin kick. Again, it really is important that you pivot the feet. Pivot, spin kick, pivot again. Once I get done with my kick, I have to pivot my foot back down to help me go back down to where I start. And I really want to try to get back from uh, exactly to where I started so that way I can throw the next spin kick again. All the way up. Double spin kick. Boom, boom. That's the kick that you want. If you watch me from the side here, I'm gonna take the glasses off again just so I don't break anything. Check my time here. Okay, not too bad. Boom. Boom. Back around. Boom. So, what I really wanted you to see was that pivoting of the feet. Once you pivot those feet well, um, you should be able to double spin kick, triple spin kick, quadruple spin kick. Because it's all about controlling the feet. Once you control the feet, then it makes the kick a lot easier, okay? Then the last one here for, for black belt, outer crescent kick to inner crescent kick. So this is both legs. You can do this one. Actually, there's a couple of ways to do this one. So again, you guys can watch this one too, and anybody can practice it and try it out if you want. I can go outer crescent kick to an inner crescent kick, both legs. Boom, boom. I can go outer crescent kick to inner crescent kick. Same leg. It really just depends on which one you want to do, but for video's sake, both legs, outer then inner, boom, boom. So you can follow up. This one's a little tricky to do. You got to have good flexibility. That's why it's one of the black belt techniques. Got to have some good flexibility. Got to have good control over your hips and be able to get your crescent kicks up high enough. This would be done in a close range. So if I'm not gonna hit the bag, but swipe here in front of the bag, boom, boom. I wanna be able to make sure that I can get my foot up head level. You don't want this here. And I'm just too close. I don't have the flexibility or leverage to really get that second kick up. You don't wanna do this in the middle of that combo. Give yourself the space to pick that up because you may not have the time for that. So those are the kicks there for everybody. Kicks, um, three sets of 15 kicks on each leg. So 
If you're kicking alone, what you want to do after each set is maybe give yourself a 30 to 40 second break, then start the second set. If you're kicking with people, that's very good, even if you got three or more. But even if it's just one and two, it's a good um, transition over. One person kicks, next one rests, then they kick, other person rests. So it's a good transition. If you got three, um, that is a really good transition because one rests, one uh, kicks, and the third one can observe and watch and look for pointers and things to be able to help each other with if you got a third observer there. So that should be the job when you got three or more people there or of how you do the kicking drills. So those are kicking drills for today, Tuesday's virtual class.